Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balcom. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial of how to paint the Plague Marine Moor Slug from the Series 3 Space Marine Heroes. The first colour that we're going to use is Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II. It's one of the Flames of War colours, but any olive drab will do it. I'm just going to paint his shoulder pads. You can also use this to do his loincloth too. He's got a nice smooth layer of this, we can move on to the next colour. One of the reasons I'm going to be doing the Series 3 Heroes miniatures is just because I think across all six of them they cover pretty much every aspect that you get on Death Card miniatures so by doing the six of them you'll have pretty much everything that you need to do any miniature. So next we have Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this to do all of the metal parts on the miniature. So the likes of this guy, you've got only one small bone horn going out the side of him. You've got the weird kind of growth coming out the top of his head and also his power pack. He's also got drips and things like that on the model, which you do get on quite a lot of Death Guard models. You've got the Plague Spewer, which is a specific kind of backpack for them. I do a bit of a glass-sided design on the side of it to make it look like it's the liquid sloshing about inside. Next up we've got Zerius Purple. We're going to use this to do all of the tentacles on the miniature. By doing the six of them, it'll just give across all six pretty much everything that you'll need to paint any of the miniatures for the Death Guard. The little nerglings that they have at their feet as well, I've got a video on how to paint nerglings. It's a very basic video, but it's a quick way to get them done. But I do them slightly differently for each one just to make them a little bit different. Next up we're going to use some Vallejo Model Air Rust. It's just to do the kind of dark brass coloured trim on the armour plates. Also use this to do any of the little badges or decorations on a miniature too. Like some of the little spiky parts on the plague spewer or the little fly badges that they tend to have too. Also the little things that like the incense burners as well. Always tend to put them in that too. Once you've finished adding the rust, it's on to the next colour. So next up, it's going to be a little bit of Citadel Rakarth flesh. We're going to use this to do any of the bony spurs that are coming out of them, and also the strange growths coming out the top of the power pack. Wasn't too sure what these were really meant to be, so I did them kind of like bony, but with like a blue hint to them, so they're done differently to the bone spur which is growing out of his shoulder and the usual bone spurs. Also paint the ones on his base too. Next up we're going to use some Citadel Mournfang Brown. Going to be using this just to do his skin. So using it to go around the respirator type thing that he's got on his face there. Just do that flesh part of his face and his head. It does have quite a strange circular mouth on one side of his head as well so you can leave that. We're going to give that a coating of my fist on red shortly. Next up we're going to use some Citadel Kislev flesh. We're going to use this to do all the fleshy tubes that are coming out of his power pack. As I say, this one's got the kind of tank at the top there, so I'm going to do glass sides on that so you can see the liquid sloshing about. So if you don't want to do that, you can skip some part of this video. But it's a nice little effect and does set it off quite nicely. Once you've finished the fleshy tubes, you can crack on with the next one. So next up, we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo Black. I'm going to be using this to paint the body of his Plague Spewer. Now hopefully you did a better job putting them together than I did. For some reason I couldn't get it to squeeze together properly, it kept popping out of place. And so, he has a little gap on the back end of his Plague Spewer there, thankfully it's not too noticeable. If you do have a similar problem, you can easily fill it with a bit of plastic putty or green stuff or whatever you want to use. 
Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Dawn Yellow. I'm going to use this to do the boils on him. He's got the three big pustules on the front of his arm plate there. With a bit of gunk trickling down the front. He's also got numerous small ones on his head as well. So you can give them a dose of Dawn Yellow. That just makes them stand out for when we come to paint them all up properly later. Now it's time for some Citadel Moot Green, which is a nice bright green to start off with. We use this on all of the drips and the little runs. Also, if you see on the side of his power pack there, if you want to do like a glass panel with the liquid sloshing about inside, I've painted a black disc on each side. And that's as you're going to be looking into the drum that's on the top of his power pack. So once you've used the moot green to do all the drips that are running down from his armour, we're then going to use it to do kind of sloshing liquid in that tank as well. So you should see that on the next part of the video. So now we're going to use some Citadel BL Tank Green. I'm going to use this to shade all of the moot green that you've just put on. So you can see that I've done this little kind of filament bit in the middle of the plague spewer as well. That's because we're going to do that so it's got a bit of a green glow to it. You'll also see the moot green at the back there where we're just colouring in on a power pack where we've painted the liquid inside that drum at the back as well. So once you've got all these shaded, we can go on to the next shade. And that's going to be Citadel Null Oil. We're going to use this on all of the bits that we painted with Citadel Lead Belcher. So again, this is another video where the view is going to change partway through, because I tend to record quite a few videos over the weeks, depending on what I'm working on. So this is the old style angle, and then partway through it's going to change to the new style angle, which I think is a lot better, and you don't get that flicking between focusing on the background and the foreground. Now a very quick layer, we're just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Mephist on red, just to paint the inside of that mouth on the side of his head. Like so. Now it's going to be Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I'm going to use this to paint the bone spur on his shoulder pad. You're not going to use it on the ones coming out the top of his power pack. And then you're just going to use it to paint all of his armour. So you get that shaded in the recesses and it should come out as a almost like a cream colour. Next, we're going to use some Citadel BL Tan Green. We're just going to go over his skin. Now, you don't want to do tons and tons of this. You don't want it to be really, really thick. You just want to give it a nice colour just to discolour that skin. And once that's been discoloured, you're all good to go for the next part. Nice little cat hair holding onto his shoulder pad there. So now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Caribou Crimson. We're going to use this to go into that mouth on the side of his head and also to go around these three pustules that are coming through his armour. Next one is Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. We're going to use this to paint these strange growths that are coming out of his shoulder pad, the head and the top of his power pack. So the spurs on the bases I'm painting up just like normal bone like he'll do the bone spur that's growing on the shoulder pad. But with these ones, I want to give them a bit of a blue tint. So I'll be using this to shade them, then building up the colour again, and using a tiny little bit of Nihilac Oxide just to give them a little bit of brightness too. But for now, just give them a nice coat of Drachenhof Nightshade, and then we can move on to the next colour. Now I'm going to use Citadel Agrax Air Shade. I'm going to be using this to coat the areas where we use the Model Air Rust just to tone them down so they're no longer shiny, they'll be quite dull. So any areas of that model air rust, just give them a decent coat of this. Then we can move on to the next shade.
I'm going to use some Citadel Athonian Camo Shade to shade the fleshy tubes that are growing out of his power pack. That's just going to give them a bit of a dirty, rotten look. Don't want to go too deep and give them too much of a shade on it. Just give them that discoloration. Rather than having pools of it in the recesses, you just want it to be slightly darker and slightly different colour. That means that when we come to repaint the skin tones back on, it won't look too different. So now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White mixed with Citadel Ushabti Bone so you get that slightly off-white cream colour that we're using for the armour. So you want to be leaving the Seraphim Sepia in the shade and the recesses. Any of the little pock marks or anything like that on his arm as well, you want to leave it in there. And just basically get it on the smoother surfaces and around the edges of his armour so that he's got that not quite smooth off-white colour. As I say, you don't want to do this so it's 100% smooth. You do want it to be slightly mottled when you're applying it so it doesn't matter if you're sort of like you're missing little bits or you've let some parts of it streak, that's fine, because it just adds to the weathered effect of the armour. Next up we return to Vallejo Russian Uniform World War II. You're just going to start reapplying this to the shoulder pad and the loincloth. So when you're reapplying this you want to think about where the light's coming from and try only reapply all the colour to the areas where the light will be catching it. With the loincloth you want to make sure that you're keeping it to the raised areas and the flatter areas and making sure that you're leaving some of that seraphim sepia in the recesses there. So next up we're going to add a little bit of white to the Russian uniform. I'm going to start doing highlights to this area. We're not going to go too wild with them. Just make sure that you're lightening the areas that be catching the most light. Highlighting some of the details on the shoulder pads there. Same thing with the cloth, you want to be making sure that you're getting the details in the cloth highlighted, so any un lower edges to any tears and things like that, just give them a highlight along there. Also any of the bigger services. So we're going to do a final highlight on this, adding a little bit more Vallejo white to the previous mix. And this is mainly going to be edge highlights and for the details. On the loincloth you're going to be using this for the sort of crests of the cloth. And any little edges underneath cuts or holes in the material itself. Okay, so we're going to start using Citadel Moot Green now. We're going to be using this to do all of the drips and that coil at the front there. Now the coil, I'm doing exactly the same method that I did with the plasma coils or the plasma conduits a while ago. So what I'll do is I'll link up that tutorial here so that if it's not covered too much in this, you can see exactly how I do it because it's just a scaled down version of what I do on those big plasma conduits that you got with Necromunda. Jar a cracking piece of scenery, I must say. So once you've reapplied your moot green to this area, we're now going to add a little bit of white to the moot green. You're going to be applying this to the drips in a sort of like a reversed J shape. So it's going to run underneath the drips down one side and it's going to get wider at the bottom where it goes around the bottom of the drip. You want to make sure that the opposite corner to the J shape is a bit darker because that's where we're going to be putting a reflection of some light there. If you put moot green over that area or you want it darker later on, we can do that with a little bit of BL tan green. I'll be showing you an example of that as well a little bit later. So that done, we're now going to add a little bit more Vallejo white to the previous mix. I'm just going to do a thinner reverse J shape on each of these drips. So this is going around the drips on his plague spewer, also on the drips on his front, on his power pack coming out the end of the Plague Spewer 2. If you could hear that ripping sound, that was the cat Ziggy shredding a chair. So we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix. Once more we're going to be doing a thinner area on these drips than we did previously, so that you can see all the previous layers that we've done around the edges of it. I'm just going to be adding that to each drip, 
to give them that shine on one side. If you want a tutorial on how to do these drips just on their own, then that's no problem. Just let sing out, I can do that. But it's a really nice way of getting those drips so it looks like they are dripping goo and you've got that green gunk, the kind of reflection on it and that kind of thing. So now I'm going to use a little bit more white mixed with the previous mix once more. There's quite a few layers to these. You can see the lightness on the coil in the middle there taking shape as well now that I'm holding them off the way. And all I'm doing there is I'm doing a kind of wider at each end and it's getting thinner towards the middle. Every time we do a layer, that band gets thinner and thinner and thinner until finally we'll have white going right the way across the middle and expanding at each end. The final layer here is just going to be pure Vallejo white. You're just going to be doing the thinnest of thin lines down that side and a little tiny bit around the bottom. And we're also going to be doing a spot of light on the opposite side of the brighter bit. So where you've got the J or the reverse J going round and going underneath the drip. On the right hand side instead you'll want a little spot of reflection on there using the white. I'm going to go around and do this on each of the drips. Sorry, that's not quite in shot. You'll be able to see the little drips on there. So now we're going to use a tiny little bit of BL Tan Green. And on the areas where we put those drips, we're just going to pour a little bit of darker shade around those reflections on the right hand side. So if you'd like a little tutorial on how to do the tank or how to do the drips, sing out in the comments and I'll get one of them done. Because I've definitely got another plague spear kicking about somewhere. So that won't be a problem. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Adrax Air Shade. We're just going to dirty this plague spewer up. So I'm thinking maybe putting this more in all the joints. And adding that so it looks like it's grimy and all the dirt and funky stuff from Nurgle's gathered in all the recesses. You can also do this to all of the lead belcher parts on the power pack. On his face mask and the little bit that goes around the back of his head too. As always, if you get any colours onto an area where you didn't want them, just repaint them as you go along. Now working on the little tentacle coming out of his foot, we're going to use some Citadel Zerius Purple. He's also got a bit of stuff bulging out of his shin there. So we're going to do that the same colour as the tentacle. Whatever it is, it doesn't look healthy. So you want to be leaving the druchy violet in the recesses and just painting the raised areas of the tentacle that are coming out there. Now to highlight that, we're going to use some Citadel Gene Stealer Purple. So you don't want to be doing all of the area that you did with the Zerius Purple. You want to be doing sort of about 60% of it. So leaving some of that Zerius Purple on display there. And again, mainly adding this to the areas that be catching the light too. Finally, for the tentacles, we're going to use some Citadel Pink Horror. And this is mainly going to be to do some very thin highlights on each of those sort of segments of the tentacle. So always go for the top edge of these where you can. Put the little highlight on there. Once you've done that, that's the tentacles finished. Next up, it's back to the pustules. We're going to use some Citadel Dawn Yellow. So just going to pick these out and make sure that where that Caro Bird Crimson went on, it's not too wide and it's not too far into the pustule. You want to make sure that the majority of it is the Dawn Yellow. And also pick out any small pustules on the miniature such as the tentacles, there's a few on there and if you didn't do the ones on his face earlier you can do the ones on his face now like so. so next we're going to be adding a little bit of white to the dawn yellow we're just going to be doing a bit of a highlight on the top edges of the biggest pustule so there's the three on his stomach here and you've also got a few which are on the tube coming from his power pack to the back end of the plague spewer. 
So we're just going to highlight them too. Now we're going to start working on the bone. We're going to use Citadel Rakarth flesh first. So we're going to do the teeth in the sort of face mouth that he's got going on there. We're also then going to start working on this bone spike which is coming out of his shoulder and then working on those other growths which are coming out of his power pack, the back of his head and also his shoulder. There's a couple on his chest too. So I'm trying to paint a circle around the top of all of them so it makes it look like they are open. So it's like a little tube coming out, maybe like a little exhaust or something. Now I'm going to use some flat Ushabti bone to highlight these. We're highlighting the top edges of them to make them stand out as though the light's catching a little bit more. If they're pretty much flat and horizontal, then I'm painting the whole circle on them. Next up is Vallejo White. We're mixing that with the Ushabti bone and we're just going to do one final highlight on all these bony growths. This is mainly the tip of it and then we're doing some lines going down to the base, not quite all the way there. Just to make it look as though the light's catching the ridges of those bony growths. It's the Citadel Technical Paint, Nihilac Oxide. We're going to use this to paint some verdigris on the Vallejo rust colour parts of his armour, so the armour trim is getting the verdigris treatment. I'm mainly putting this on areas that would not get rubbed or scraped or anything, so around those bolts, sort of underneath edges, and around edges and things like that. I'm going to be putting them on, and just giving that that oxidised look. I'm also going to be doing a little tiny bit on these spores just to lighten up some of those darker areas of Drakenhof Nightshade. Once you've put that on, you can then smooth it off and make it so it's a nice light blue effect on that. Now going for Mournfang Brown, we're going to start painting his skin. So you want to reapply this and pay a lot of attention to the face and the area around the face. There's loads and loads of detail on there, sort of ridges around the mask. He's got ridges around the weird mouth on the side of his face and around where the bony spores are coming from, but also around the eye. He has a lot of little kind of crow's feet, I suppose, around his eye, towards the coming from the eye towards the back of the head, and a few little details around there. So when you're reapplying the colour, you really want to make sure that you are getting those areas and making sure you're leaving some of the shade in there. So we're going to add some Citadel Deepkin Flesh, which starts to give the brown a kind of pale light bluey almost dead colour to it. I'm going to start applying this highlight to the head making sure that you're leaving some of the shade in the recesses and also some of that Mournfang brown too so that you have a nice smooth transition from one shade to the next. So we're going to add a little bit more deepkin flesh again. I'm going to think about where the light is catching this, so it's going to be mainly on the top edges. So you'll have less of the previous layers on the bottom of the highlighted areas. And the highlights will get thinner and thinner towards the top. I did choose to have unhelmeted heads on all of these Space Marine heroes because I've got plenty of Death Guard with the helmets on. I thought the heads on these were so great that I wanted to just paint them all up separately. So now we've added a little bit more Deepkin Flesh to the previous layer. We're going to start adding more highlights to this. You can see the amount of details on his head just from where I'm highlighting there. They are really, really detailed, these miniatures. And one final highlight, adding some more Deepkin Flesh to the previous mix. I'm just going to be doing some really thin highlights 
around some of the details. Like so. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Vallejo White. Just going to paint his one good eye. So as always, get a tiny bit on your brush and you want to be dragging the brush from near the nose, away from the nose. Like so. And I'm just going to get a little tiny spot of Vallejo Black. I'm just going to paint a little spot for the eye on there. I want to try and get him looking a little bit moody, so I want that pupil near to the top of the eye, so that he's kind of looking out from under his brow because his head's slightly tilted forward, just to make him look that little bit more moody. Now we're going to start working on those fleshy tubes using the Citadel Kislev Flesh. Now when you're looking at the tubes, it doesn't look like there's too much detail on them, but where you've got those kind of openings in the flesh and you can see the metal tube beneath, there is ridges and details as though it's stretched and things like that there. So it's worth paying attention to them and making sure that you get them, if not with the initial layer, then you highlight them with the later layers just to make them stand out. I'm going to add some Citadel Deepkin Flesh again. I'm going to do the first highlight on this skin. I do quite like the Deepkin Flesh when you're using this to highlight the skin of like the Death Guard or any of these tubes and that kind of thing. Because it does give it a slightly dead look to it because it's got that kind of hint of greeny blue to it. Ever so slightly, it just looks that little bit off. So I think it's ideal for parts like this or when you're making the skin look like it's on a corpse or giving something an unhealthy pallor, it's a lot better to use than just mixing white. So I'm going to mix in a little bit more Deepkin Flesh. I'm going to do another highlight on these tubes. You can see some of those details starting to come out now around these little kind of tears, ridge around the end and then the little stretchy bits. From there, think about where the light's coming from and then highlight them according to the light. You'll start to get that tube looking pretty good with a little bit kind of almost like natural shading to it. The final part on the tube is going to add a little bit more deepkin flesh and give it one final highlight. And this is mainly going to be to pick out details and little edges, just add the odd little highlights here and there. It just sets off some of the little details on it. I'm going to start working on the casing of his gun now. So we're going to start with Vallejo Black and just retouch up this, any areas that may have had other colours go onto it, just touch that up so that's a nice smooth black colour. Once we've done that we can move on to the next colour. Now we're going to use some Vallejo German Grey, not Vallejo Black as I've just shown there. Because the pots look almost identical and simply picked the wrong one up there. So it is Vallejo German Grey this and definitely not black again. You can see the change in colour from the, the black to the grey there. So you're going to be highlighting the top edges and any little ridges. Finally, we're going to finish highlighting this with a little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey. We're going to do the under edges of everything, or the lower edges, I should say. So if there's a little ridge, like along the bottom by that handle, you want to be painting the, the top part of that which is usually the underside of any little ridges or nooks.
So that done, we're now going to work on the inflammations and making everything look a bit tender. So we're going to use some Vallejo Red Wash. I'm going to put some of this around his eye. Don't so much need it on his eyeball, but if you put it on his eye, and then around each of these little pustules which is growing on his face, and where those bony spines are coming out of his head, that just makes it look a little bit more tender and delicate. So it's quite painful and inflamed. We're then going to use this on the tubes from his power pack to the plague spewer too. Now we're going to muddy up his armour. I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia first and start adding the runs to this. I always try and get that top edge to have a thin recess shade of the sepia and the bottom one to have a slightly darker one as though there's more collecting there. So that's why you'll always see that the bottom part of it always has a shaded bit which is bigger than the rest, like the top edges and the top surfaces. All you want to be doing is doing vertical runs of Seraphim Sepia from all the edges. If you imagine standing still with his arms by his side, that's the direction I do the runs. So next up we're going to do the same with Citadel Agrax Air Shade, but we're going to do less runs with the Agrax Air Shade than we did with the Sepia. And a final bit of corrosion and weathering to his armour. We're going to use some Citadel Null Oil. And we're going to do less runs than we did with the Agrax Air Shade. We'll put them on vertically again. So you can see now that his armour is looking really old and worn and battered. I think these runs really set it off and help it look as though it's really streaked. The grime has run down from the lit ridges and edges and different surfaces on it. With it being Mark III type armour, you've got plenty of those ridges there. Now we're going to start with Citadel Typhus Corrosion. We're going to start corroding the Plague Spewer and the Lead Belcher parts on his power pack. So again, I'm mainly going for the joints and things like that where moisture and stuff will collect. And because you have that kind of area where the moisture will collect, that's probably where it's going to corrode a little bit more. Maybe slower than the thinner edges and ridges and things like that. So we're going to try and get both with a little bit of the typhus corrosion. Probably see that a little bit better here. I'm hoping to do another video on how to do rust in a different way. Getting shown how to do this by a bibliotheca who you see comments in here who's done some stunning rust work on barrels and things like that and his death guard miniatures so i will check that's okay and if so i'll link up his instagram there because there is some great rust effects and that's something that i want to try and cover at a later point as well because they look absolutely stunning the barrels that he's done do look like real barrels and just one final thing to do with this we're going to use a little bit of citadel Fugan orange and we're just going to paint that around the rusted areas and that just again gives them that kind of slightly brighter older rusty effect and makes them stand out that little bit more so once I've finished this layer I then give them a blast of matte varnish, I use the Halfords matte lacquer and then once that's dry you go for the blood for the blood god and add some of that glossy gore to the miniature so I'm using some of this around the pustules that are growing out of his chest here I'll also be running a line a bit around the bony things growing out the top of his head also putting a bit of it in that mouth on the side of his face as well also he's got like a little open bit with some pustules inside which I hadn't spotted when I was painted originally. So you can add some in there as well. And once you've finished that, that is the finished Moor Slug. So this is Moor Slug in all his feathered glory. 
really, really pleased with how he turned out, and it's a great addition to any Death Guard army, this miniature. Regardless of which colours you paint, it is a really, really great miniature to paint up. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you liked the video, you enjoy the channel, and you'd like to support us, please head to our coffee page linked below where you can buy us a brew. Thanks very much.